Hello, Plant Tribe, and welcome back to my Wednesday Succulent Series. If you are new here, welcome. Hi, hello. We do this every Wednesday. I dedicate Wednesdays to uh, succulents. So we have kind of been going through a whole kind of 101 from the basics up to more advanced kind of stuff involving succulents. And uh, so today, I'm going to introduce myself first. Hi, I'm Nikki. How are you? Um, if you're new here, um, this is my channel. I am so happy to have you. I know there's a whole bunch of new people here. Um, I know that succulents isn't for everybody, uh, but I did create this particular succulent series because I did have a lot of questions about succulents and how to grow them and all this kind of thing. So I kind of figured I would just dedicate one day a week to Strictly Succulents, and that is what we're doing. Um, if you are returning, welcome back. It is lovely to see you. Um, I hope you're enjoying this series so far. We are starting to kind of get into the fun stuff and arrangements and that kind of stuff now and some projects. Um, but today we are gonna be discussing selecting containers um, as far as arrangements are concerned and what else? And kind of going through um, you know what to look for what to pick uh, what kind of look you want to go for and then using unusual containers and how to plant unusual containers soil no soil that sort of thing so if that sounds like something you'd like to stick around and watch then please stick around and watch hi you're back i'm back we're all back let's get into it <laughs> So the first thing uh, that I wanted to mention is that succulents are really great and that you can pair almost any succulent with almost any other succulent and they will thrive together. They look great together. Um, at that point, it's just kind of a matter of what look you're going for. Also, it's really fun to, to try different things, to try different pairings, different colors, and just kind of experiment with it. Um, you know, like I always say, like your imagination is your only limitation uh, as far as this point. And even still, if you Google like succulent arrangements, um, you will come up with some gorgeous, gorgeous inspirational ideas as far as what to do with yours. And selecting a container is also just as much, if not more fun, because there are so many really cool things um, that you can put succulents in that I mean, the possibilities are endless. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you some homework. That's right. I'm giving you homework. <laughs> so there's obviously like your traditional pots um, where you would walk into a garden center or the Walmart or Home Depot or whatever. And there's so many different colors, varieties, textures, materials um, that you can buy pots in that... Um, you know your options are just so vast and then like I said you can use like different containers things that you find around the home thing that you can go to like a second-hand place and thrift um, you know if your family is getting rid of a bunch of I don't know family heirlooms or whatever like you can anything that will hold something is something that you can put a succulent in and they look great in just about every type of container um, and there is a succulent that will go with just about any kind of container so that's kind of what we're going to talk about today so the first thing that i want to mention and i did touch on it uh in i think it was my first 101 video <clears throat> is drainage now i would highly recommend especially in the beginning when you first start creating arrangements or working with succulents that you do use a pot with a drainage hole um, at least until you get a handle on how succulents work uh, when to water how much to water that kind of thing and then you can kind of start diving into um, you know containers with no drainage once once you kind of get a handle on the watering situation because you can kill a succulent so incredibly incredibly quickly by overwatering it and that's definitely something you want to avoid because it's messy and gross and I mean it's obviously a waste of money and time so why not try to avoid that if we can <laughs> so you need to decide um, once you've established that yes we do need a pot with a drainage hole you need to decide what material you want to use 
And I mean, when you go to the store or wherever, you know, you have options that we've been through before. So you've got metal, you've got glass, you've got terracotta, ceramic, um, as far as traditional, actual created for plants, pots, and whatnots. <laughs> See what I did there? Okay. Um, as far as that stuff goes, so kind of decide what sort of material that you want to plant your succulents in. Once you decide that, then you can start looking at colors and textures. And I mean, there is so many, uh, I know I keep saying it, but there really are so many different options. What you also want to consider is what succulents you're putting into your pot or your arrangement. Um, you know, do you want to go with a high contrast look? Do you want a more monochromatic sort of look? Meaning they're all kind of the same uh, color, just different. For example, I'll show you this one that I made. So this one is a nice kind of natural looking container and I went more monochromatic. They're all sort of the same color. Um, so that would be what I mean when I say like a monochromatic look. They're all, you know, similar in, in color. Um, I don't have one that would show a contrast. Um, I've taken most of my succulent arrangements apart so that I can do new projects with them. Um, but I will insert <clears throat> photos, as I always do, of uh, what I actually am talking about. Um, so color is one thing to consider when you start creating arrangements. Find out what kind of colors you want to use. And when you're looking to buy a pot, you want to decide whether you want the pot to, to kind of match with the color of succulents that you're using, or if you want it to be like a, a contrast to the color of succulents that you're using. And while succulents look great in pretty much anything, if you can find a pot that kind of coordinates with your succulents, it's much more likely to impress <laughs> and look really nice and put together and sharp. So the next thing to consider is size of the pot that you're looking for. Now, in order to figure out the size of pot you're looking for, you're going to have to consider the succulents that you want to put in it. Now, the succulents that you're typically going to buy are going to be smaller uh, succulents. So like this size, I would consider this as far as ones that you can buy actually a pretty decent sized. Um, so you need to figure out how many succulents you want to put in it and the size of the succulents you want to put in it. Um, these succulents will actually grow like substantially large. Um, but that's more in an outside, like in a succulent garden outside, you know, down in California when they have beautiful weather all the time, um, or something like that, uh, in the home, um, and in the nurseries locally, um, uh, I know at least here in, you know, North, the upper side of North America, uh, we can't grow them outside. They're not going to get massive inside our home. So this is probably the size you're going to kind of see more often. Um, so you want to pick a pot that kind of matches with that. So you kind of want to buy a pot that isn't too big. It isn't too small. You want to give your succulents a little bit of room to grow. Um, but you don't want a pot that's too big that has too much, uh, kind of space in it. Again, it depends on what kind of look you're going for when you're creating that. So that's kind of something that you need to decide when you're buying all of this stuff, right? Uh, one thing that uh, I saw a little while ago, and I saw it in this discussion on, on Facebook, and I was just like, what? Somebody had posted a picture of this succulent arrangement that they purchased at like, I don't know, like Walmart or someplace like that. And it was a really nice uh, arrangement. And it had, you know, kind of the succulents packed in similarly to this, but it was like all succulents. Um, and the the person that had posted it was concerned that the succulents were all packed in too tightly together and she was saying like should i separate them i feel like they're all too close together and there was a lot of people saying no you should definitely repot them that's not enough room da, da, da. well i'm here to tell you <laughs> that it's not necessary to do that um, you can pack your succulents in really really nice and tight um, and they will be fine they enjoy it the the good part about that is especially when you're creating arrangements is that the succulents don't grow as quickly so your suck or your arrangement will actually last substantially longer um, they will grow a little bit um, but it takes a lot longer for them to get to the point where you're like okay that doesn't look good anymore 
Um, so go ahead and pack your succulents in there. Make it look great. Leave gaps, don't leave gaps. I personally like that nice, densely packed look. I find it much more aesthetically pleasing. But everybody's different. You know, you do what you find looks great for you. The look that I personally like is this nice, densely packed in look. Um, but yeah, so again, it's not necessary. It's all up to the aesthetics that you find pleasing, I guess. <laughs> The other thing that you need to consider as far as size is concerned is the height of the succulents that you're using. If you're using um, a whole bunch of like really short little like rosette ones like this, you don't want this big tall pot. It's gonna look really funny. You're gonna have all pot and then just like succulents sitting on the top. Um, you know, if you're gonna use a taller pot, you want a little bit of height as well in the arrangement and i always like to go by the theory that i heard from um, laura from garden answer and she always says you know you want spillers thrillers and fillers so your fillers will be you know all the little things that you kind of fit in around and then you're going to have one kind of impact plant so for example <clears throat> in this one this would kind of be my thriller it's the big you know one in the center and then you have little fillers in and around <clears throat> and um, I mean this one I, I guess you could say has a couple thrillers because this one's kind of tall you want just varying heights of your succulents and then I did have a spiller in the front here uh, but unfortunately I had taken this to work and the spiller my little string of dolphins didn't quite make it um, which was fine because I wasn't really jazzed about how that looked anyways, but it's nice to have something just kind of coming over the pot. But I find in this particular arrangement that really wasn't necessary. I find it really nice exactly how it is and I don't think it needs anything extra. Um, but this part, this pot you can see is quite short. So I chose shorter succulents. If I put something super tall in here, it's going to look really off and really weird. Um, again, and I'm going to keep saying this and, or maybe I won't and you'll just understand, um, everybody's idea of what they l like the look of is different. Um, so if you like a really tall pot with a bunch of little short succulents, then that's, I mean, that's totally up to you. Um, but typically it's more aesthetic to the eye. It grabs your eye more when there's, um, you know a, a taller plant in a taller pot if that makes sense shorter plants shorter pots I don't know if that translates well I hope you know what I mean okay so now what if you don't want to use like just your everyday run-of-the-mill go out and buy an already created pot what <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> like a traditional pot that someone would look at and go oh that's for plants um, what if you want to use something different there are so many different options um, as far as that's concerned. But again, then you have to consider drainage. So sometimes you'll um, you'll be able to drill holes in things. Um, there's many different videos online about how to drill holes in different types of uh, materials like metal. Metal's pretty simple. You use a nail, hammer, and just pound out a couple holes in the bottom. Um, what I would recommend if you are drilling holes in something that doesn't already have holes in it, it's better to create multiple smaller holes than one big hole. Um, it gives the water several places to go instead of just having to be forced into one hole in the middle. And not overly often will all the water just automatically want to go to that hole. So it's nice to have multiple holes. So that's just kind of my little personal recommendation for you um, if you are drilling into plastic um, you can just use a regular old drill bit and just drill a hole um, if you're drilling into ceramics or terracotta or glass um, you do need a special bit for that it's a diamond tip drill bit and um, I know there are some videos um, online about how to do that you can just Google um, uh, like drilling holes and pots or something like that. I know there. I, I know personally a, a bunch of YouTuber friends that I know have created videos on that. I'll probably do one 
uh, of my own here shortly. I just need to actually purchase a diamond tip drill bit because I don't have one. Um, and it, that's really driving me nuts because I have a lot of pots that I really want to use, a lot of different containers that I want to use that I don't have a drill bit to use. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> So in order to use the diamond dr tip drill bit on things like glass and ceramic, um, you wanna keep the surface wet. And as you're drilling, just really, really take your time. Um, make sure you keep that surface wet because if not, it's going to shatter on you. It's going to uh, uh, chip and that kind of thing. So anyway, go look it up. There's plenty of great videos on YouTube about how to do that. Um, if you're just planning on making like a temporary arrangement, let's say you have like an event coming up or you have, you know, you're hosting a, a party outside or something like that and you want to create an arrangement, something like, ooh, you know, if you're just using it for a temporary situation, you can get away with not using a drainage hole um, simply for the fact that you're not going to be watering it over an extended period of time. Um, so there is that option as well. But if you're putting in anything that's going to last longer than just a temporary scenario, um, you definitely need to go with something that does have drainage because you're going to run into issues. Like if you're using metal, it will rust, it will eventually rot. Uh, same with wood. If you're using a wooden container, it will eventually rot um, if you don't have that proper drainage to allow the water to dry out and release out of the pot and out of the soil. I personally have this really cool, it's like, a, it's almost like an antique jewelry box or maybe it was used to keep silverware. I don't really know. I picked this up at a secondhand store about a year and a bit ago and I bought it specifically to use it for a succulent planter. I think it would look so, so cool. But in order to plant this, what I need to do is take that, there's this felt, um, like lining on the inside I want to take that out I would like to actually layer it with like a plastic of some kind and it definitely does need some drainage holes in the bottom because when I do create this one um, it, it is one that I would like to have on display and have you know long term um, so that will be one of the videos that I do down the road showing how I'm gonna plant that up and I am really excited for that I've been excited about it for like a year and here we still are. <laughs> um, but I'm actually kind of glad I waited and then I'm able to share that with you guys on this series. So that's kind of fun. Um, but for something like that, if it was like a family heirloom or an antique that you didn't want to drill holes in, I got it secondhand. It may be worth money. I don't know. Probably not. It's in uh, a little bit of dis disrepair. Um, but I am going to kind of scuff it up and, and whatnot anyways. But if it was something that you didn't want to again mar with drill holes and or water um, you just want to be kind of cognizant of putting anything in that um, because like I said the water can really damage the material and you could kill your succulents so you know it's 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 a toss-up it's a toss-up what do you want there is also um, the decision whether to use soil or whether not to use soil uh, succulents are great because really they don't need soil in order to grow. They actually do surprisingly well with little to no soil and will grow and last a substantial amount of time. So if you want to plant up like a cool piece of driftwood that you found on the beach or something like that, uh, you can definitely do that with just a little bit of sphagnum moss um, and just plunk the succulent in there and it will be quite happy with that. The one thing that you do want to watch out for though, if you are using um, a soilless option, uh, number one, make sure that the roots stay protected. Make sure the roots don't get any direct sunlight. Um, roots are rather delicate and I mean, they're not designed to be exposed to sun and you will burn your roots if you don't properly uh, cover them up. Um, so just watch out for that. Um, the other thing that you want to make sure of is that you are watering the roots directly. If you can water the root ball, like the actual roots directly, um, that's a bonus. Um, sometimes that's not always possible. Um, when I water arrangements in containers that don't have drainage um, or in arrangements in general, I tend to use that little squeezy bottle that I showed you a couple 
um, videos ago and I, I swear by that thing and they are especially good for arrangements because you can get right down in there at the base of the plant and just water the root ball directly um, so especially if you're using a soilless option there's not as much to hold on to that moisture so it's great if you can actually just water the roots directly you can also try if it's not possible to get directly to the roots um, if you water kind of near the base of the plant and allow it to run down to the roots that's also an option as well I mean just do the best you can you'll figure out what works for you and in the arrangement that you made just make sure that you're not um, like absolutely drenching things or you're not exposing the roots to the elements and as long as you protect those roots and keep those roots nice and healthy that will last you several years with no soil at all so it's a really great option if you decide to go with a non-traditional uh, container and want to use sphagnum moss or moss or whatever as long as you take care of those roots it will last you for years the only other thing that you would need to worry about in a soilless scenario is um, the nutrients for the plant so I would probably recommend like semi annually um, giving it a little bit of uh, cacti and succulent fertilizer uh, the one I use has been great it's from Schultz works wonderfully and um, because a lot of the plants nutrients are going to come from the soil because there's no soil, the plant doesn't get the nutrients. So it is good to kind of give it a little helping hand if you're gonna use something like a moss. So a lot of questions that succulent arrangement makers <laughs> get asked is like, how long is it gonna live for like that? So let's say you create a succulent wreath, for example. Uh, so you have your wreath form, it's all stuffed with spag moss, you stick in all of your succulents, um, like I said, as long as you take care of the roots, make sure that it gets enough water, it gets enough light, literally it will last you for a couple years. There's absolutely no reason why it wouldn't. Um, the only trouble down the road that you might get into, it's not even trouble, is that the succulents um, might outgrow the arrangement. Um, and in that case, you know, you have a few options. You can deconstruct it and do a whole brand new one or use them in different projects, which is a lot of fun. Um, again, that's one of the reasons why I love succulents because you can just kind of take stuff apart, use it over here, and, and they're completely fine with that. You can do that with a tropical plant, take it out, repot it, take it out, repot it. Your plant would have a fit and it would die in no time. Um, but succulents aren't like that. They're really great. So they will last you for years and years as long as you take care of them. Um, yeah, as long as you take care of them, <laughs> they'll last or as long as you want them to last for. So basically, that is all I wanted to mention today. I tried to keep the video a little shorter today and a little more specific. Uh, next week, we are actually going to start talking about constructing an arrangement. And I am going to make an arrangement with you. Um, and we're just kind of going to go from there. We'll do a few different arrangements over the next couple weeks and then we'll start diving into some really cool projects and I'll show you how to do some of those. So I would like to finish this off by saying don't be afraid to experiment with things. Succulents are something that are super fun. Uh, they shouldn't be stressful. <laughs> so try something new. If it doesn't work, try something else try different containers, try different arrangement, find out what looks good with what. And again, like I said, they're great to just take apart and redo if you don't like the look of it. So take all of those things into consideration when you're picking your succulents, you're picking your pots, but definitely just have fun with it and experiment. So my homework for you. <laughs> just to get your minds working and thinking about it i would like you when you get a free second just to kind of walk around your house and take a look at some things that could potentially be repurposed as a succulent container i guarantee you you will find all kinds of really cool stuff and i would love to hear about it i would love for you to send me pictures of unique things that you find in your home that you could put succulents in um, if you find anything cool and you want to share it with me please um, follow me on my Instagram, Sh send me your pictures, I'd love to see. Or if you try something, oh my gosh, please send me photos on Instagram or post your photo and tag me. Um, 
Again, here is my Instagram handle. If you don't follow me over there already, please consider doing so. It is a lot of fun over there. I post all kinds of stuff all the time, updates on plants and different things that I'm doing or just what I happen to be thinking that day. <laughs> and I'd love to have you over there as well. So that is your homework. I'm gonna wrap it up here and keep this video short-ish and sweet. Um, so thank you guys so much for liking and watching and commenting and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. It is a huge help to my channel and I definitely do appreciate it. And with that, please remember that I love you all to bitty bits and I would like you to have a great day, night, week, month, and year, and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah! dog fur my fur oh that's cat <laughs>